I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now starting. Welcome to the show. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first Vino Confessional. This is the Vino Confessional booth right here. It is the safe place that goes uh, well everywhere. But I've been sharing my confessions with you guys for going on six years now. So I'm excited for the tables to turn. That was me doing turntables. So for our first vinyl confessional, let's talk about worst first dates. So I haven't heard any of these. I haven't talked to any of these ladies. Alicia has been setting this all up. So I'm excited and pumped to hear people's confessionals and see what kind of shenanigans you little weirdos are up to. Alicia told me that these stories just get spicier, like starts with a good one, but ends with somebody dating Harry Styles. And it just like apparently gets spicier on the spicy scale. We've got Paige on the line who apparently has the two Tinder date debacle story, which I have no idea what this is about to be, but let's bring her in. <laughs> Hi Paige, how are you? I'm good, you look so pretty. I love your hair. Oh. Thank you. I'm getting used to it. It's such a big adjustment for me, but I'm like, I'm, I, I keep telling myself that I look chic. I'm like, I, you look expensive. Bitch. You do. I would have a fro. So I love it. <laughs> oh, do you have curly hair? I'm jealous. I do. It's thick and curly and wavy. And I tried to even like cut it just like right above the shoulders. Yeah. Horrible. We'll never do it again. Can't. Okay. But can I just give you a little tire pump? The girl I just talked to had really, really curly hair and she had it all brushed out and like, it was so big and beautiful. And I just love that look so much. I love curly hair. See, that's pretty. I can't, I've got like the waves. So it's not even like the pretty fro. The grass is always wavy, greener, but... isn't it? It is. You know, it <laughs> is. <laughs> okay, well, I'm excited to hear your story. I have not been prepped for any of these, so I have no idea what you're about to tell me, and I'm very excited. Okay, perfect. All right, well, let me set the scene for you. So okay. currently now I'm I'm married with two children, but back in the day, you yes. know, I was dating a lot. So this was like right yes. after college. I had moved to Savannah, Georgia, and I was newly single. And, you know, I'm like 23 years old, pre-kids. So I'm like skinny and hot, you know. Uh, <laughs> and Tinder was like brand new. Like it had only been out for like a year. So I okay. had downloaded Tinder. And for a girl, again, like 23 years old, newly single in this new city where I didn't know anybody and having all these boys like at my fingertips, I was like, right, this you is get in a candy amazing. store. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I mean, I spent like a whole afternoon just swiping and having like the best time. So fun. So I was talking to like a few guys on there, but there were like two guys that I gravitated to most and we were talking and I honestly cannot remember their names, which is kind of perfect, I guess. So uh, in, in the yes. theme of Bachelor, we'll call one Chris and one Jesse. So... <laughs> So Chris was, the conversation was really good, but Jesse was hot, but okay. like the conversation wasn't as great, but you know, I, I wasn't at that point yet in my life where I felt comfortable asking out a guy. So I was like waiting for, I was trying to like, you know, hinting and flirting, but like, he just wasn't really getting there. But Chris asked me on a date and I was like, okay, you know, I'll, do, I'll go out with him. So we met up at a bar downtown. Have you been to Savannah? I haven't. I've always wanted to. Okay. Oh my God, you would love it. But it's a small town, but at the same time, there, there's no like shortage great. of bars. Yeah. yeah great. And there's a good downtown area. I mean, there's like a couple of streets just full of bars. It's, it's a big going out yeah. scene down there. So we met at like a sports bar downtown. I got there early to get a drink to calm like the date nerves. And the, the, the bar was packed. So I like was able to find a couple of spots and I sat there, ordered a, I used to drink the like oakiest Chardonnay which is like so I cannot anymore oh I feel like <laughs> yeah. that's like such a like rich like mom drink it is but then I also feel like it's a young adult drink like because they're drinking okay, that's with true, their mom's that's drink so that's oh like, yes my, I see where you're going yeah so my mom would always drink oaky Chardonnay so then I was like I'm gonna drink this too so it's probably yeah, yeah whatever it was like thick and buttery and now I cannot but uh <laughs> so I <laughs> add one of those and then Chris got there and I could like immediately tell, okay, like this is not my vibe, you know, he was not attracted to him. He didn't really look like his pictures, but whatever. He was a nice guy. And so I was like, okay, like we'll just, you know, have a couple of drinks and snacks and stuff. So then a little bit later, uh, it's probably like two Chardonnays deep. Yeah. This guy comes 
and sits on the other side of me. And I look at him and I think it's Jesse. And I'm like, what are the chances of all the places this guy could have gone and everywhere that he could have sat? I'm sandwiched in between these two tender boyfriends. No. And then Chris leans over and he was like, Jesse? And Jesse was like, Chris? Hey, man, what's up? Like, they were buddies from college. They start, like, they start catching up with each other, like, leaning over me. And I'm just chugging Chardonnay because I'm like, what in the f*** is happening? And I was like, I was on a two-on-one, essentially. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what to do. They, they were just, like, chit-chatting, catching up, like, literally leaning over me. And I'm just, like, sandwiched in the middle of them. And I'm like, I- I'm going to go to the restroom, go in the bathroom. And some random girl, I'm like, I-, I have to tell someone this. And as you know, there's, like, no bond stronger than two drunk girls in a bathroom. So. None. I tell her yeah. everything and I'm like, I don't know how this happened. Is she your bridesmaid at your wedding now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know her name. I never no, talked to her again. I should have gotten her number. Yeah, you should have. But yeah, so I just go back and then and then Chris was like, Jesse, this is this is Paige. And we shook hands and I could like see the recognition in his eyes. He was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you so awkward and so then it was hard too because then I had to just like continue this date with Chris when this hotty hot hot coin Jesse is like sitting next to me and and it was just the most awkward thing that I think I've that I've ever gone through (laughs) that is that is a terrible first date but so what okay so did you guys all acknowledge it or it was kind of like a secret between you and Jesse totally secret Oh. Yeah, didn't acknowledge it at all. I finish up the date with Chris. Like he walked me out. I went home. This is I think it's like before Uber, like call a cab. But I, I honestly couldn't even tell you if we kissed. I don't remember. Wait, but did, uh, did Jesse show up alone at the bar? Yeah, he was just there to like watch a game. It was like a sports bar. That's what I always wonder. I'm like, did they plan this or something? Oh, where they they really- wanted but- to have a threesome. <laughs> they were that trying to play. They're like this bitch. Mind drinks chardonnay she's on her second glass show up now let's feel her out and you oh were like not god. giving the vibes so then they were just like oh my gosh jesse and chris you dirty dogs that is hilarious i literally never thought of that possibility but i guess it is possible and you just but- sat there drinking your chardonnay you weren't like th- like there was no full no. conversations happening like it w- that's so sus i know well after they kind of caught up it was like Chris just kind of went back to our date because he didn't suspect anything. So he was just like, so anyway, and went on about whatever he was talking about as if Jesse weren't there. It was like, he said hello to his friend from college. I mean, it was, we didn't have a second one. I I think I like texted him later that night and was like, you know, I don't see anything here. And then Jesse texted me that night being like, well, that was weird. Yes. And And so I think I- No follow-up? No, I I remember like we, I, I- I still kind of like tried it to like hint at him to maybe have something happen, but he never did. I don't think all the lights were working upstairs with him. He was a beautiful man, okay. but just wasn't. Yeah. And I did end up seeing both of them out at separate times. Again, it's a small town. So you see people yeah, okay. out, but nothing ever came from it. It was just like the most bizarre, weird night ever. <laughs> oh my God. That just like, well, that's hilarious. But I also just, I have such a funny picture in my head of all of this going down. I don't know why it's so funny that it was the, the Chardonnay really like added to the storyline. <laughs> it was like the main character for me. I don't know why that's so funny. It was a big part <laughs> of it. It was. <laughs> oh, I wonder. I wish I could reach out to them now and be like, look, time has passed. I know. I have a podcast. I need to know the truth. Did you set this up as a threesome? What was it? I would love to know. What a coincidence. I mean, it does make sense that maybe it was a small town, but still. I know. I th- I think the same thing. And I, I, I feel like I'm a pretty good like bullshit reader. And I feel like I would have, yeah. uh, I mean, I like to think I would have picked up on any signs of like weirdness, but it, at yeah. the same time, I'm like, what are the chances of this? Like, this is so weird. Like literally both of my Tinder boyfriends decide to come to the same, like, it was just, yeah, it was weird. I don't know. I, if I even, I that... can't remember their names, but yeah, if I did, I would like maybe ask. <laughs> Do you know what's so funny? This just reminds me of something. I don't know how I had the confidence to do this back in the day, but I dated two guys at the same time and had them over to my house at the same time 
and like it didn't even phase me I was probably 16 years old and I was dating my high school sweetheart off and on and then there's this guy that I was obsessed with from like a small town hockey team in like another city and he was coming into town but I already had plans with my high school sweetheart and I was like I'm just gonna invite them both over and I have a (laughs) hilarious photo I wish I could find it I'm sitting with my crunchy ramen blonde hair like crunchy hair the crunchy ramen noodle hair and I'm in a Skittles oversized sweater with pajama pants because that was cool and the I both guys are on either side of me and this I was not drinking a buttery chardonnay it was probably like a Coke or something but I have a photo of it and I remember thinking like it wasn't weird I was like I like them both I'm like kind of dating them both I'll just have them over and I don't know how they didn't care but like it didn't get brought up I was 16 but that kind of reminds me of that story so I'm like that is so funny did you straighten your bangs like did you do like the crunchy hair and then like the straight in the front yeah to the side and it would like sizzle as you like straighten over it it wasn't a straightened piece of hair if it didn't sizzle. I like, it was like, oh, I got to find the photo. I'm sure it's somewhere in my mom has like collections of it. There's a box somewhere where I have photos of that and a picture of me sitting beside Snoop Dogg on Snoop Dogg's uncle's lap with a diamond on my tooth from when I was 18. You must find that. that. Please, for the vinyl, do it. That is gold. I got to do it. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm like obsessed oh, with so doing these calls now because I get to like connect with the listeners too. And like every time I talk to anybody that's a vino, I'm always like, why are y'all so normal and sweet and chill and funny and like my kind of people? Like I would be friends with all of you guys. It's amazing. I love that. And we, all of my friends that listen to you, we say the same thing. Like we're like, oh, we would just totally hang out with Caitlin if we were all in the same place. Okay. Well, if you're ever in Nashville, let's go grab a Chardonnay. Okay. Get over it, oh, Caitlin. It's Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna let you live it down I can't even drink Chardonnay anymore because it makes me cry I don't know what it is if I drink Chardonnay I cry I get it um there are certain alcohols that just like it, me on vodka angry me if I drink yeah. like it, it's really weird how differently it affects you but you know you just got to find your juice and stick to it that's right yeah that, that is right it. well thank you for sharing and uh I can't wait for everybody to hear it oh my gosh thank you so much for having me on I love you and um yeah I you're doing you great that. thank you so nice to talk to you you're so you sweet too. hey guys uh do you want to smell better when you're naked hmm yeah you heard me right when you strip down to your birthday suit, your skin sweater, wearing only the smile on your face, <laughs> you take a whiff, you smell the scent of lavender. Did I paint a good picture for you? <laughs> Lumi is a game-changing whole body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only in the pits, but also feet, privates, and everywhere else that we get odor. So no matter where you use it, Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day long thanks to its one-of-a-kind pH optimized formula, and they've got over 275,000 five-star reviews to show for it. So make the switch to Lumi, and this year will be all about head-to-toe confidence. Nudity never smelt so good. And right now, they have a special offer for new customers. Get $5 off Lumi starter pack with our exclusive code and link. Just use the code VINE at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E. D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. I love that Lumi is safe to use anywhere on your body. Their deodorant wipes are a game changer. I travel with them all the time for when I'm on the go. Plus it lasts all day, so I don't even have to worry about smelling bad. It's amazing. Their starter pack, it's perfect for you want to try it out. That's what I use for my travel size anyways. And it comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice. Like you could do the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. As a special offer for the Vinos, new customers get $5 off the Lumi starter pack with code VINE at lumideodorant.com. And that equates to over 40% of your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code VINE. All right, let's get into our next guest. Fair warning. I don't know what's about to happen, but I was told to tell you that this is possibly rated R, PG-13 R, if you have like little ones, maybe press pause. You look beautiful. Thank you, as to you. So I have the craziest first date story ever, and I think you're, I've always wanted to tell you this when I hear your confessionals, because I'm like, shut up, I have the best one. Yes. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Yeah, so this is a Tinder match, and it was like 10 years ago, so I'm 30 now. I was probably like 20, 21. Like, I think Tinder had just came out, and so I I had, which makes me feel old, because it doesn't seem like 
Tinder has been around that long, but anyways, I digress. Okay. So I meet with a hockey coach from another town and he's ironically playing in my hometown in Northern Michigan that, that night. And I was already going to go to the game. So I'm like, okay, well we can meet up there. This should have been like a huge red flag because he got kicked out within the first, like, I don't know, 10 minutes, first period for sure for being too argumentative. But of course, red was like my favorite color. I was 22. <laughs> so <laughs> you're many, like, make it more red. Yeah, like, please bring it on. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> so then he rode to my hometown on a charter bus. And so he didn't have a vehicle, but he wanted me to go for like a drive with him. And I just got in a brand new car. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'm like, yeah, sure. Like I can drive. It's Northern Michigan, shitty ass snowstorm. So I went around what should have been like a 10 minute loop, but it took like 20 minutes. I'm like white knuckling it the whole way there. And I'm trying to make small talk. I don't even know this guy. Like I just matched with him that morning. And so then as we're driving, I'm how, so how about the weather? Like that kind of stuff. And I, I kid you not, and this is going to get even more anticlimactic. He whips out his dick. I hope I'm no, allowed to say that. No, swear to God, swear. And he literally starts jacking off. And I am like, um, I am not that kind of girl. Like, I don't know what you're expecting, but and like, to be fair, maybe sometimes, but not with that approach. And I'm just like, holy shit. So, so he. Yeah. Oh, just wait. So then he starts jacking off and he's like, no, it's fine. I just thought you'd want to watch me. And I'm like, um, I'm driving, but I'm like so young. Like if that happened today would not fly. Right. But you'd be like, and get the f- out. Yeah, pretty much. So then we're like still driving and I'm like flipping through XM radio and I'm like, so what kind of music do you like? <laughs> and he's like, that is not what I'm trying to think about right now. And I'm like, stop. Are you kidding me? This is where it gets worse. So then he goes into all these more questions and starts asking about boot socks. And he starts telling while, me that he- Wait, was, while he's jerking off? Yes. So like he has what? a fetish. We're, we're going to get there. So- Okay. Okay. I'm all dressed up because I'm meeting my girlfriend out at the bar afterwards. I have boot socks on because back then they're like the the thing, you know? So he's telling yeah. me how he like loves women that get dressed up. And then he starts telling me how he loves boot socks. And he's like, how many pairs do you own? What colors are they? And I am like, oh. holy shit right now. Like, this is not happening to me. Why would this be? And I, I literally, I'm still just like white knuckling it. So then after immediately, this is actually rewind before when he first started jacking off, my first response was like, um... This is verbatim what I said, how I said it. Um, you better not make a mess in my car. Like that was my first <laughs> priority, which is I think funny because that's my brand new car. And I was like, Yeah, just you're like my Sir? ass off to buy it. I'm like young twenties, like what the f-? I so did then, not want your sperm all over my new car. But literally, like get those babies out of here. So <laughs> then We go back to the ice rink. We finally make it there after what feels like forever. After he's like asking me literally how many pairs I own, what colors are they for these boot socks? I'm wearing boot socks at the time. And then he, when we get to the ice arena, he's like, you should go park over there. Like where it's all dark. And I was like, "Mm, I think I'm just going to park right here. And I like pull him to where it's just like lit up like a Christmas tree at the front, you know? And so he doesn't try to kiss me. Nothing like that was what I was worried about at that point. I'm like, oh my God. And he literally says to me, okay, well, I'm going to go finish in the bathroom now. I said, bye. (laughs) Okay. So he just (laughs) got out out of your car and finished in the arena bathroom. So he says. Allegedly. (laughs) Yeah. And then I was meeting up with my friend afterwards and she's like, how did your day go? And I was like, it was fine. Like, (laughs) didn't even know. A few months later, I ended up telling her. And she was just like, oh my God, I was wondering why you were being so weird. But I was like traumatized. Who goes on dates after that? No, Ugh. that is, that is absolutely your trauma. Your trauma is valid. That is yeah. like at that age too, you know, like you just yeah. like, it's, your body doesn't know how to react to trauma. So you go into like freeze and f- like, you just like, we'll go into freeze mode and you're like, just keep driving. And this yeah. freaking jack off bandit is just in your car talking about boot socks what yeah okay how old were you oh god I was probably like 21 or 22 if I had to guess I think 21 okay let's call this guy Jack for obvious reasons I don't even know his name (laughs) not well I mean obviously I did at the time but it's been so long I did see him on tinder like a later time and tried to rematch with him to tell him he's disgusting but it didn't he didn't match with me 
how old was Jack? Was Jack older than you? I honestly don't know. He, I want to say probably at least a few years older if I had to guess, because I wouldn't, I've I've never dated my age really. (laughs) I feel you. So this guy was a hockey coach. Yeah. What league of hockey are we talking? Just like, I don't even know. Like my home, I don't, you know what? I don't really know. Like my hometown's hockey team, nothing crazy or, you know. It doesn't matter. I just wonder where <laughs> Mr. Jackoff is today. Like, I wonder if this is still, if, if he's gone to therapy, if he's done some work around it, if he oh my God, honestly shame same. around that. <gasps> is oh, he still into think? boot socks? Like... Is he still in? I feel like if that's like a fetish for you, like boot socks, I feel like that's very specific. I feel like that like once a boot sock lover, always a boot sock lover. Oh, totally. But I'm for just sure. so sorry that you had to go through that. That is now tell me, have you dated normal de- uh, men since? I mean, honestly, after that, like it was, like, let's be real. It wasn't like I have like PTSD or something from it. I just think that at that time I stopped I getting on, like, I think I just stopped getting on dating apps for a while. And then eventually, I mean, I'm engaged now, but yeah. Okay. Okay. And he like, he's like, what the f- is a boot sock? Yeah, totally not yeah. into boot socks at all. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like just that uh, alone would be like, I would never want to look at one again. That is, that is so disturbing. It's so funny that like, you've thought about this for as long as you've listened to the podcast and literally like, wanted to conf- con- to tell this confession. That is the worst first date I've heard in a very long time. Thank you. I literally, wow. even when I, so I was listening to your podcast driving into work and I was like, heard you say like worst first date stories I'm like this is my chance so then I went and I even like subjected it strategically because I'm like no one can pass this I think I felt like he was jacking off in my car like first date (laughs) because I'm like they're gonna they're that's gonna intrigue literally anybody they like give Alicia a jump scare and sip I know she's like oh no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> audibly gasps that is I know so her crazy. her response was like first of all are you okay but I was just so excited I got an email back I'm like I didn't even like respond to that I'm like no I'm fine I'm just excited to be on here okay wait so you said you took a 20 minute loop why did he ask you to keep driving or something why did you extend the trip so my thought process was it was like a loop like a oh, it would have been like a 10 minute drive so I'm like sure we can go for a 10 minute drive so I know the roads obviously so I'm just going yeah. around and then when he, within the first five minutes, he was doing his thing. And it would have, it only took 20 minutes because the roads were so bad. I mean, the confidence, like that is a long ass time to jack off one. So I'm impressed yeah. by his stamina, but <laughs> two, and he was going the whole time, just uh, jerking it the whole time. Yes. And, but me, my, honestly, my only thought the whole time was like, God, please do not make a mess in here. Brand new car. That's, that's very fair. That's very fair. Was there any other conversations that happened that w- like, or was it all just him asking questions about this? Literally just him asking questions about that. Because when I tried to ask about the music, he shut that down real quick. Yeah, that wasn't the music. <laughs> he wasn't, wasn't having it. Him. It was no. not a fetish of his. No. <laughs> Wow. I mean, yeah, I just can't believe like within five minutes, he's like, you know what, this seems like a really good idea. I think she's gonna get into it. Did you talk to him at all after? Like, no. did he message? What? No, I'm ma- are you kidding me? I probably unmatched him like still in the parking lot. <laughs> Oh, that's like, fair. Absolutely not. I don't know if anyone else is going to relate to this out there. And this is just me being completely honest because obviously mm-hmm. masturbation, we the per, people do it. There's no shame in that. But to totally. do it in front of another person is a whole other story and like mm-hmm. so um, inappropriate and disrespectful. But I always just think about like, like after, even if I like, if I masturbate and then I am done, I feel so much shame after that. Like my dogs were even in the room. So I'm oh like, my God, I know when my cat's in- there, I'm like, can you not, can yeah, you not I'm like, can you not cat stare at me? Like make <laughs> eye contact when I, Pino gets like worried about me and I'm like, get out of here. But I wonder if he like went into the bathroom and when he finished, if he's like, I am a loser. Or if he's like, that didn't go well, but I got off like what? Probably just like, yeah, got her. <laughs> I wonder know. if it was like some sick way. Was he hot? Like, did he have no. a reason? I mean, oh, like God. he wasn't like bad looking, but I mean, I mean, I you know probably going to be from Canada. I really like hockey guys. So I was like, well, sure. Like, oh, sign me up. Right All you the, have to do is play hockey. <laughs> right from the get go. When you said oh. that, I was like, is this bitch Canadian? Because I'm obsessed. I would be the same just way. I'd be like, you're, you're in any sort of form of hockey. Like, 
yeah. come on in let's go for a ride i probably wouldn't yeah. look past the jacking off i would have been like well he plays hockey <laughs> yeah oh well i guess maybe he'll want to go on another date <laughs> he was from the up in michigan i do know that so some kind of michigan team you know but he, yeah, he was from the UP and then took a charter bus down to Alpena is where I'm from. I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah. I'm not, but I wonder if like anybody else from Michigan listens to this podcast and they know the Jack Off Bandit. Like, come forward. Would you die? Let's, I would die. I would die. Oh my God, <laughs> for real. Oh my God. Thank you so much for sharing that story. You're amazing. I just feel like your whole vibe and energy. I'm like, I could be friends with you, but that's that makes sense because you're Michigan and I feel like you're an honorary Canadian. For sure. I felt that way since your first season of The Bachelorette. Honestly, when you had sex with Nick Vile, I was like, that's my girl. That's a me <laughs> move. I would have done that. Before the fantasy suites? Yeah. Yes. Loved it. Trailblazer. I, I love it. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you so For much, sure. Krista. You're such a beauty. And I can't wait for this to come out. People can, Thank you, know, you we can start a support group for you or see uh, where this guy is now. Yeah, might need it. But thankfully, like I said, I'm engaged now. Wonderful man. Would never do that. <laughs> oh I love it oh that's sweet yeah. I'm happy for you and thank um, you that's all I got for you thank you for coming on love it thank you have a great day okay last but not least this one the subject title like say less it said first date with Harry Styles so um we definitely need to bring her in because I need all of the nitty-gritty details hello hi sorry yeah, i'm so bad talk. with technology oh my god sorry wait i'm obsessed with you in another lifetime i'm coming back with your hair okay can i tell you i curled my hair because my hair journey this year is like trying new things and oh. i woke up this morning and i was like i did the overnight curls i looked like a grandma uh -huh. falling asleep so i don't know how this is gonna look uh but i just tried to brush you, it and you look like a taylor swift like queen like <laughs> this energy you're giving me is good and i'm obsessed and the fact that you went on a date with harry styles has got me feeling all types of way like what is going on i would date you i get it what's going on tell me the story okay so basically and this is gonna age myself i posted a vine in like 2014 or something of me uh -huh. at Chelsea Piers in New York City, like golf range, not a golfer. Yep. It was just, I, of all videos I posted, it's one of those where you're like, I probably should have deleted it, but I did it. <laughs> and somehow he saw it and I was working as a model at the time and he had his manager contact my agent. And she was like, would you be down if like Harry Styles got your phone number? And I was like, what? You're like the Harry, Mr. Harry, Mr. Styles. Yeah. And I was like, Okay. And then she gave his manager my number or whatever. Texted very normal over text. We agreed to meet okay. up for a coffee date because at the time we were both underage, I think. Yeah, like 20. Okay. So we meet at the Smile in New York, like this really cute, quiet little coffee shop. And I was, first of all, I'm not a coffee drinker. Like, <laughs> at all you're like, like i you're i would drink anything for harry styles though yeah i'm I'm a diet coke girly so i felt like i'm, like, my I'm not really like a urine <laughs> drinker kind of girl but harry styles asked me to so sorry okay go on <laughs> no 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 for real like and i'm also like a people pleaser so i'm like okay whatever you want to do so yeah we went and because i'm nervous i'm like pounding coffee because it's like what do i do with my hands you know <laughs> right yeah. so yes and also <laughs> literally me also, I'm just like nervous in general because it's Harry Styles, even though I don't know, he's yes. very down to earth. But basically what ended up happening, the coffee and the nerves got the best of me. Oh, and no. oh no. <laughs> this is so gross. I can't believe I was saying this. Um, yeah. but, but basically, <laughs> I, I yeah, that's what happened. I basically blew up the bathroom. And if you've ever been to the smile, it is a small restaurant, <laughs> like single stall, <laughs> like People know it's also like low ambience. Like there's not like loud music playing. It was just like, oh no, I was so humiliated. And I'm like trying to like, I turn on the sink for background noise. <laughs> I'm like doing everything I can. You're like playing and... music in the bathroom, yeah. room, like <laughs> One Direction. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to steal my girl. <laughs> Yo, that was me. And I also was like low key trying to play it cool and be like oh yeah like one direction i've never heard of them but i had like his poster on the wall growing up so 
you like manifested that you were like you like looked at him every day on your wall we're like I'm going to go on a coffee date with him little did you know that you were gonna have like you didn't know the be- the benefits I guess and repercussions of chugging coffee you're not a coffee no. drinker you don't know the coffee makes no. you poop I so what, did not what know what happens next so I basically go out and I try to like play it off. I'm like, oh, you know, lady problems, which that in itself, I felt embarrassed saying at the time. Now I'm like, but yeah, I'm like trying it. to play, play it, trying to play it cool. And then he basically like had me leave first out of one door and him leave out of another door. And at first I was like, oh my God, this is because of this. But it was because he had like rumors at the time because he was like dating a bunch of models or whatever, what, whatever, live your life. So then we ended up talking on and off like, for a year and a half after that oh. yeah oh, so, so he was not phased he did not no, know I was phased though like for me he did <laughs> yeah you're like how long did it take for you to recover from this yeah uh well I don't drink coffee on dates anymore um <laughs> so. like stick it to this uh the, the tap water but wait yeah. so you talked to him for a year and a half after that's yeah for like a that, year what and happened? a half now I need to now I was rooting for you guys what happened well, basically, it was, like, one of those things. So, I'm, like, a huge Stevie Nicks stan, and he's, yes. like, close to her. And yes. there was one of those situations where, like, I had concerts to, like, see her at, like, City Field with my friend. And then he texts me, like, day of, like, hey, like, are you in New York? I have tickets to go, like, if you want to meet Stevie. And I was, like, I can't do this to my friend. I can't. And I oh, was also, she's like. a girl's girl. Yeah. So, and then it just, like, after that, it kind of fizzled out. Like, that was about it. See, that would make me think he would want you more because you're, like, actually, I'm already going with my girlfriend. Like, and you're, a, and he knows that you're a fan of Stevie Nicks. So, like, that, oh, my gosh, you are iconic. I would have been, like, oh, my friend. <laughs> this is iconic. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think this is iconic shit. I'm obsessed with this story. Have you did, have you talked to him since? No, not since then, honestly. No. Do you, did you have to sign an NDA? No, that's probably why I'm saying all this. I probably shouldn't say this shit because oh. like I'm still like in like the industry, but I'm at the point where I'm like, you well, know, life's short, whatever. Also, we're not gonna expose you. This is amazing. Um, do you <laughs> think he knew you that you blew up the bathroom and he was just like like poop happens? I'm guess he was like super chill. We had a whole conversation about like acne struggle journeys. Like he was very yes. Honestly, like I kind of got like friend zone vibes from him on my end, and I feel horrible saying that. But it was kind of one of those like disillusionment moments where like you meet someone, you're like, oh, they're a real person, and yeah, you know, yeah, I get that. I get that. I've had many experiences in my last like seven years of meeting people where I'm like, it's so funny how we put celebrities or right. like people like that on a pedestal when they're actually, which it sets them up for such failure because they are human and so right. they're going to be human. And then they're like, oh, I'm not this like shiny object. I'm just a real person, which is like nice, but also it's very humbling for them, I'm sure. But that's, uh, you felt friend zone with Harry Styles. Yeah, this is iconic. I'm obsessed. Was there anyone else in the restaurant or did they like rent it out for you guys or what? There were like, I would say- Were they paid actors? <laughs> to this day, I'm like, were, I don't know. It is like one of those like hip places. I don't know if like, you know, like New York, there's like socially the whatever. It's like yes. one of those places, but it's also a coffee shop that I've been to after. So it's like, I don't know if it was rented out or if he just like picked a low key place where like, it's like a place where you people go and they usually see celebrities and they just don't react. Cause it's also uh, New like York. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. That's true. And so did you guys hook up? No, I, <laughs> oh. you're like, no, 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 I just told you friend zone. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. And I, I don't think I was like in the right place uh, mentally, but he did. He was very nice and we were underage at the time, but he did tell me that he was hung over that day, which I appreciated yeah. the honesty. And yeah, we love an honest king. I, I, re- I remember him saying like, oh yeah, I went to Soul Cycle and I just felt the tequila sweating off of me. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Cause when I'm hung over, I'm in bed with Burger King. I'm not at Soul Cycle. Yeah. Who the <laughs> shit goes to Soul Cycle when they're hung over? That is yeah. like hardcore. No, that's when I knew we weren't compatible. <laughs> yeah, you're like and friend zone. And yeah. that was that was like, it for me. You got the it. Could never be me. I love it, yeah. but not me. You're like, we can be friends, but you drink coffee and go to Soul Cycle. I, yeah. I drink tequila and lay in bed and eat chicken. Exactly. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. oh my gosh what a great story though I feel like models probably have so many 
fun dating stories because like we all know Leonardo DiCaprio will not date anybody but a young model and I just want to know like have you dated anyone else famous since then not like official but I have been on dates with honestly I don't even care if this gets out because like whatever you know yeah we don't Uh, know who you are (laughs) uh (laughs) well I mean it doesn't even matter uh Dane Cook oh shit funny uh I kissed Joe Jonas once but that was he was shorter than me so it was like a little weird he's quite short yeah and then John Francis Daly not that famous but somebody Bill and who was the other one oh my god this is so fun oh John Stamos creep Ah! creep what he's low he's low-key creepy (gasps) because it was like Uncle Jesse I know, I know, I know. I, I one of my friends hooked up with Uncle Joey, and he was what? also a creep. Yo, it's yeah. always like the that innocent one kind ones. Of makes sense, though. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. The Uncle Joey gives me creep vibes. Uncle Jesse, I mean, he's so. I feel like he's so charming and sexy. I wouldn't get creepy vibes from him. Damn it. Yeah, it was like one of those instances where, like, I was out with my friends and also my agent, and he was like, "Oh, have her come to my table," and it's just like uh, I don't like when yeah, guys yeah. are like that. You know what I mean? No. But I was young and naive. Um, do you know who, now I'm really going to age myself, do you know who Brett Ratner is? That name sounds familiar, but you're going to have to give me context. He's like, he's just like a really big movie producer, or he was back in the day. Okay. And he, he did the same thing to me. I was hostessing at a restaurant and he was saying, and he was like, bring her to my table. I want to tell that. her that she can be in my movies. I was oh, like, yeah. Actually, I act all like, uh, at the time I was like, oh my God. But, uh, yeah, like, no, of course, like, oh, okay. because- <laughs> That's like a power dynamic, and they totally like take advantage of it, especially. Well, and I was a dingling like nineteen year old, being like, "Oh my god, I moved to Vancouver because I wanted to be in movies. This is my chance." Yeah, no, I'm the same. I'm from Illinois, so I'm like from like the most ho dunk place. So everything. And you probably trust everybody. Exactly. Well, not anymore, but I definitely did then. <laughs> yeah. That hey, you gotta like learn the hard way, I guess. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what that is. Cr- and do you live in New York now? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, but it's across the river. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Well, it was so lovely to meet you. I loved this yeah. story. And I'm looking you up on Instagram. I want to follow you. Okay. <laughs> bye. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Okay. Well, I enjoyed that a little too much. I love, like I said, connecting with binos. It's one of my favorite things. It like literally just was my cup of coffee this morning. I feel so happy about it. And I feel like you guys will really enjoy these stories as well. So I got a little inspired by the last one. And I think the next vino confessional booth should be about a celebrity like if you've ever hooked up with i'm talking like maybe jonathan taylor thomas back in the day we love a short king and maybe you like hooked up with chris Catan. i don't know why he just changed my mind it's because he tried to hook up with me once but like anybody from a to z that we might know tell us your confession and your hookup story or first date with a celebrity anything to do with a celebrity that you think we'd be like oh my god no way so email your stories to off the vine podcast at gmail.com make sure if it's a good one it's in the subject like really clear what happened so we can pick you okay you guys that's uh that's a wrap on the first vinyl confessional booth and i am pleased so i hope you guys have a good rest of your day and i am really bad at goodbyes bye i'm caitlin bristow your session is now ending and if i'm being honest i wouldn't mind a rating and review 